This is question 22-2C from chapter 22 of your textbook. And we're given a table um, that tells us our input of labor, or the number of workers per week that we hire, and our output of flash memory drives for each number of laborers that we can choose to hire. So in other words, if we hire nobody, we make none. If we hire one person, we can make 10. If we hire two people, we can make 45, and so on. That's what this table is telling us. And the question is, at which point does marginal product begin to diminish for the manufacturer of flash memory drives? So they're asking us about the marginal product of labor. So let's recall what the marginal product of labor means. So remember, anytime we talk about a marginal product, we're talking about what happens when we increase or decrease something by just one. So in the case of the marginal product of labor, we're asking the question, how much more of my output can I produce if I add one more worker to my workforce? Um, or how much less if I subtract one worker? Um, so this, just like any other marginal um, type of calculation is going to be a calculation where we look at the change in one value relative to the change in another value. And I'm going to, like I do often, I'm going to use Excel to help me with these calculations. So I've already put into Excel the numbers that they gave me in this table. Of course you can do this on your own with paper and pencil. You don't have to use Excel for this. I just prefer to use Excel to help me with, um, with these sorts of calculations. So let's talk about, or let's recall the definition of marginal product of labor, the MPL. So the marginal product of labor just means how much does my output change when I add one more worker. So the calculation for this, the formula for this, is just going to be the change in output divided by the change in workers, or number of workers. Okay? so. This is going to be very similar to when we've calculated marginal things like marginal cost, marginal revenue, um, any of those sorts of marginal uh, values. So in this case, we, we know that when we're looking at these ma marginal things, it doesn't make sense to talk about the marginal product at zero workers um, because I can't compare zero to negative one because there's no such thing as having negative one workers. So our top line is always just blank. Um, but we, we start then on our second line. And I know that my marginal product of labor for this one worker is the change in output. So that's my output with one worker, which is 10 minus my output with no workers, which was zero, divided by my change in number of workers. So I have a new number of workers of one. My old number of workers was zero. So my marginal product of labor is just going to be 10 minus zero on top of the fraction and one minus zero on the bottom of the fraction, or 10. It's pretty clear in this case that when I added one worker to my workforce, I also added 10 units to my output because I could produce nothing with zero, but I could produce 10 with one. So we can continue down the table in this same way, where now for my two workers, my marginal product of labor, is the change in my output, which is now 45, which is my new output with two workers, minus 10, which was my old output with just one worker, divided by, on the bottom of the fraction, I have the change in number of workers. So I have two now, where I had one before. So it's 2 minus 1. And now my marginal product of labor is 35. And again, we can see that in this table, because we're, our number of workers is just increasing by 1 every time, we really can see that just by subtracting in our output. So you can see that when we added one, we went from one worker to two workers, we added an additional 35 units to our output. And then I can get Excel to do this calculation for me for the rest of the table. Um, so I know I want my new output minus my old output divided by my new number of workers minus my old number of workers. So now I have a formula that Excel can work with and calculate this all the way down the rest of my table. 
So now I have my marginal product of labor in my last column here. The question, though, doesn't ask for the marginal product of labor. The question asks, at which point does the marginal product begin to diminish for the manufacturer of the flash drive? So we can look at our Excel sheet and see that the marginal product is increasing from 10 to 35, and then it decreases down to 25, then to 20, then to 10 to 5. So where does it begin to diminish, or where does it begin to decrease? That's somewhere between two workers and three workers, right? Because between one and two workers, we were increasing. We went from 10 to 35, or from 0 to 1, we went from 0 to 10. From, from uh, 1 to 2, we went from 10 to 35. And from 2 to 3 is where we start to go down, from 35 to 25. So somewhere between two workers and three workers is where we start to diminish. So we can go back and put in our answers here. Between two and three workers per week, our marginal product begins to diminish. And we are good. And you'll see that in their explanation, they made this exact same table we made and had the same answers there. So we're good to go. If you have any other questions about this, please come by office hours or send me an email.